G'day, and welcome to today's Bottom Up Boats episode, where we look at to answer the question, how does a sailboat sail into the wind? We take a look at how the wind particles interact with your sails, which are effectively a type of aeroplane wing, creating the lift you needed to drive you forward. We're going to focus on three things. We're going to look at a bit of the physics behind it, before looking at how some sails act in various wind tunnel simulations, before ending up looking at some jib settings and controls you can use to make sure that you have your sails set up perfectly for the various types of wind conditions you're going to run into on the race course. The easiest way to start explaining how the sails propel a boat forward is to imagine a boat running dead downwind with the sails set perpendicular to the breeze. The wind particles hit the sail and in turn create the force which propels the boat forward. In this configuration and with the assumption that there is no friction between the boat and the water, the maximum possible speed of the boat is equal to the speed of the wind. Now that we've established the max possible downward speed, let's take a look at a couple of different boat and sail combinations and how the drag reduces the top speed. The first one to take a look at is a kiteboarder who's launched fully into the air. This results in very little friction and hence a small reduction in the red arrow representing the maximum speed. Another craft with a relatively high top speed in this configuration would be an ice boat. The three runners or blades have a very small contact surface area with the ice, hence limiting the amount of friction which becomes a reduction in the overall top speed. Finally, let's take a look at a more traditional yacht. In this case, there is a large amount of the keel, hull, and rudder under the water. As the boat moves forward, this creates a large amount of displacement. The friction associated with this displacement reduces the overall top speed significantly, as shown by the smaller red arrow above. Now that we've had a look at the downwind sailing, let's look at a boat in an upwind configuration, close all to the wind. To simplify things, it's easiest if we take a look at one sail at a time and how the wind particles flow over the sail to create lift. If we start with two particles at the top of the screen, we'll see something interesting happen as they first split and follow the path around the sail. The particles on the left hand side accelerate round the curve of the sail, actually travelling the distance from the top to the bottom faster than the particle on the right hand side. It is this differential in speed of the particles moving over the sail that allow it to fill out into the camber shape cut into the sail and create the force which propels the boat forward. The difference in the speed of the particles creates a pressure difference with a high pressure forming on the right hand side of the sail and a low pressure on the left. The speed and pressure differential creates two forces. Firstly, a small forward motion and secondly, a much larger sideways force from air flowing from the high to low pressure. Summing these two vectors together gives us the diagonal direction the boat would take, not taking into consideration the drag from the hull or the keel. While some progress is made to windward with the forces from the sails, we need to add in the resulting vectors from the keel and the hull to reach the maximum windward potential. The first adjustment to take into consideration is the effort as the hull displaces water. This less the forward force from the sails equals the net forward force. The next set of forces we need to net out are the sideways forces from the pressure flowing from the high to the low. This generates heel as the sails tilt the boat over, which are then netted by forces underneath the boat. The sideways force from the sail plus the windward hull lift less the resistance from the keel and the writing motion from the keel generate the net sideways force and the net heel. When we net out all of the factors we've just reviewed, 
the diagonal resulting vector with the keel and the hull is much closer to the wind, allowing the boat to make much greater progress to windward. The job of the crew on the boat is to trim the sails in such a way to maximise the forward motion while making sure that there is enough crew weight or ballast to balance out the sideways force generated from the pressure moving from the high to the low. The camber or curvature which is cut into the sail is what generates the lift. The objective is to have as much camber as possible without the airflow disconnecting from the sail. A good starting point for light winds is to have your maximum camber, indicated by the red arrows, 25% from the front of the sail. As the wind increases, you will want to flatten the sail, which moves the maximum camber point back, in this case 50% from the front of the sail is a good starting point for medium conditions. As the wind increases further and we get into the heavier airs, you once again want to move the max camber aft by flattening out the sail. With 75% from the front of the sail being a good guide for your heavy weather starting point. The trimmers can then make finer adjustments depending on how gusty the conditions are or what the seaway is to ensure that you have the right balance between forward motion and sideways motion which is offset by the balance in the boat. Now that we understand the basics of camber, let's take a couple of our sail shapes and run them through some wind tunnel simulations to see the different effects and how the sails act as the wind speeds vary. Starting with our light wind sail with the max camber at 25% and the wind speed at its lowest, let's kick off some wind particles to see how they interact with the sail. We'll see that the particles stay joined to the sail and if we freeze it there you'll notice that the particles going down the left hand side made it to the bottom of the sail while the right hand side was about two thirds of the way down. As we turn the simulation back on you'll see that particles exit the leach of the sail cleanly joining back up together and creating a disturbed air wash at the back of the sail. Now I've seen a visualisation how the sail with 25% max camber works well in light winds. Let's turn off the particles and increase the wind speed up to maximum to see how the sail performs inefficiently when the wind speed increases too much. The wind speed at maximum it's only milliseconds before we have to freeze it to see the relative speed differential. This time the particles on the left hand side of the sail reach the bottom while the ones on the right are around 50% of the way down the sail. This increased differential creates more forward and sideways motion but as you'll see the particles on the left hand side of the sail have actually disconnected creating a large black void. This void is generated by having too much depth for the wind strength effectively creating too much of a differential between the high and the low which results in more sideways hill and lead than forward motion. Changing the settings on our wind tunnel simulator we can turn on our view of the pressure. The red indicates areas of high pressure while the blue the low pressure. As we increase the wind speed you'll see the areas of high pressure intensify on the right hand side of the sail and the blue areas of low pressure intensify on the left. The differential between the two creating excessive sideways force which eventually then lead to the air particles on the left hand side disconnecting from the sail creating the void we saw earlier in the streams. If we freeze the simulation once we get to max speed you'll notice the areas of high and low pressure system where the black void was. These swelling particles which are disconnected from the sails are highly inefficient and indicate the excessive amount of sideways force compared to forward motion. With the heavy weather sail with 75% max camber loaded 
let's take a look at how the sail performs across the various wind strengths. At the low wind speed, we see that the particles still move faster across the left hand side than the right, staying connected to the sail and smoothly exiting the sail of the leech and joining back up together. The difference is this time is as the wind speed increases, we don't see the particles disconnecting from the sail. Here at the moderate setting, we once again see a smooth transition with the particles moving down the left and right hand side of the sail, joining up together at the leech. This pattern continues as we turn off the streams, increase the speed up to maximum. The particles once again smoothly across both sides of the sail with the speed differential, but no nasty void at the back of the sail as the particles leave the leech. To understand the inefficiency of this sail shape at low winds, we need to switch to the pressure view. With the wind speed at its lowest setting, there is effectively no high pressure or red showing on the right hand side of the sail, which indicates lost potential forward momentum due to not having enough camber in the sail. As we increase the speed, the high pressure areas in red start to appear and the blue ones on the left hand side intensify showing that the sail is operating more efficiently at medium wind speed. The difference comes when we turn the wind speed up to the higher levels. In the past examples, we had too much camber, which created intense differences between the highs and the lows, which would have created too much sideways moon. If we take away the speed slider, we can see that the particles join back together and create a relatively smooth exit to the sail highlighting its efficient operation at high wind speed. Now that we understand the theory, it's only fitting that we end today's video looking at some axle sail shapes. The first example we're going to look at here is a sail set up for light winds with the max camber forward at the 25% mark. One of the ways to achieve this is to have a relatively loose force stay. You can tell we're set up this way by the amount of sag or curvature that we have in the force day. As the wind increases and you want to shift through the gears and move the camber aft, you can achieve this by tightening up the force day. As the sag reduces, the camber shifts up, moving from the front 25% of the sail all the way back to 75% distance from the front. This finer entry to the sail and camber aft creates a more efficient sail for heavy winds, allowing you to accelerate without the leech of the sail stalling out. If we focus in on the centre speed stripe of the sail, you'll see we start off with a relatively loose force day with the camber forward. As we tighten the force day, the camber moves aft as the front of the sail flattens out setting yourself up for heavy winds. Easing the force day deepens the sail back up, moving the camber forward to the 25% distance from the front of the sail, this being a much better setup for the light airs to generate more power in the lighter conditions. Another way to adjust and control the camber in the sail is with the sheet tension. Easing the sheet will deepen up the sail, moving the camber forward. Sheeting on tighter will then flatten the sail, moving the camber aft. You can see how quickly the camber moves from the front to the back of the sail as we take a look at the bottom third of the head sail as we move through various sheeting tensions and settings. Final aspect I want to focus on today is the telltales on the leech of the sails. They're a great indicator to help you ensure you've got the camber in the right place and the airflow staying connected over both sides of the sail. If you have too much camber in the sail for the wind conditions, it will cause the telltales to stall. This is an indication that the airflow has separated from the sail and it creates the vacuum or void that we saw 
in the wind tunnels that we created earlier. So adjusting your sheet tension and or your force state tension to ensure that the telltales are always flowing is a great way to ensure that you are getting the maximum lift out of your sail under the varying wind conditions. This is why you'll see trimmers often sitting to leeward and making fine adjustments because a very small adjustment in the sheet tension can make a big difference to the airflow over the sail, ensuring that it stays connected. So that concludes today's video where we took a look at three aspects of sail trim and how you can use them to make sure that you're always set up to have the maximum power for the wind conditions. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for future updates from Bottom Up Boats.